Recording MIDI Arming a track to record MIDI is done in much the same way as to record audio. The main difference being, this time we choose a MIDI input. Click on an input icon, choose a MIDI input from the list and click R to enable. If the input in question is assigned already, you can simply drag it to the required track. If you need a new track, hold CTRL and press T or use the Create Track functions in the Tracks menu. We are now set up to record MIDI, but you won't hear any notes you play because the track is routed to the default audio output. MIDI data is just a string of instructions and has no sound of its own, so it must be sent to a MIDI synth or sampler of some sort to be converted to audio before you will be able to hear anything. If you have an external synth or sound module, you can route your MIDI data out to that by selecting the track and choosing the MIDI output that is connected to that synth in the Destination Output for this track box in the Properties panel. If you have specified this output as the default MIDI output, then choosing this will have the same result. In this case, the MIDI is converted into audio outside of Traction, so Traction will not be able to mix the audio or add further effects unless the synth has its audio routed back into Traction via some audio inputs. If you wish to use a plug-in or rewire synth, however, you can route the track to an audio output or leave it set to default, drag the new filter icon to the track and choose a suitable filter. In this case I have chosen the Linplug Alpha synth. You should now be able to play the synth from your MIDI keyboard. If you still hear nothing, select the input again and check that the Enable End to End option is turned on. This setting determines whether incoming data is sent through Traction's audio engine and can probably be safely left on for all MIDI inputs. If it still doesn't work, check the E to E button by the transport controls is turned on. If this is turned off, Traction will disable the audio engine when it is not actually playing or recording. You should now be able to hear what you play as you play it, and recording can be started in the usual way with the transport button or with the R hotkey. The click can be turned on by pressing C, and a count in can be specified via the click track menu. The Action field in the Properties panel for a MIDI input allows you to choose what happens if you record over the top of an existing MIDI clip. Merge newly recorded MIDI into any existing clips will add new MIDI into existing clips and extend them if needed. In this mode, Traction will only create new MIDI clips if you record to a section of track with no MIDI clips already in place. Overlaying new clips containing newly recorded MIDI works the same way, except each recording will end up in its own clip, even if there is already a MIDI clip on that section of track. Replace existing clips with newly recorded MIDI clips will non-destructively delete sections of existing MIDI clips so that no clips overlap. Finally, you can choose to end-to-end -to -end from this device but don't actually record which will allow you to pass the MIDI data through Traction's audio engine while recording MIDI or audio to a different track. These options provide a range of possibilities when combined with loop recording. The Merge newly recorded MIDI into any existing clips option allows you to build up a drum beat by playing in different layers while the backing loops around the markers.
The overlay new clips containing newly recorded MIDI option, on the other hand, will stack up alternate MIDI takes in a single clip in the same way as audio loop recording. Takes can then be selected from a list via the plus sign in the corner of the clip. It is also possible to add data to individual takes in a stack like this by changing the record mode back to merge newly recorded MIDI into any existing clips and recording again. The MIDI filter buttons just below allow incoming data to be filtered out based on its MIDI channel, while the channel slider will change it to a specific MIDI channel, perhaps to trigger general MIDI drums which are always on channel 10. If a program number is specified, the relevant program change message will be automatically added at the start of any recorded clips. Traction provides a list of patch names which are determined by the MIDI destination. If you are using a plug-in synth with named presets, these names will show in the list here. If you are using a hardware MIDI synth, the patch names can be set up in the MIDI tab of the settings page. Select the relevant output and click the Program Names field to see the current options. General MIDI provides the standard list of instruments which can't be edited. While Custom can be freely edited and can contain up to 16 banks of 128 presets. Each bank can be named and can have suitable bank select MSB and LSB values specified. Before you dive in and create your own preset banks however, be sure to click the Add button and check the long list of presets in case there is already a suitable bank for your synth. A quantize value can also be specified if you wish to indiscriminately quantize everything you play. Be aware that Traction defines quantize values by beat length, not bar length, so you will usually need to choose one quarter of a beat to achieve the same result as quantizing to one sixteenth of a bar in most other sequences. It is also possible to discard the velocity information by setting all recorded notes to full velocity. The Time Adjust field is used to compensate for any latency on your MIDI input. If you find your recorded MIDI consistently ends up too early or too late, you can set a value here to compensate. I find a good starting point is to set this early by double the ASIO latency. You can check your ASIO latency in the Audio tab of the Settings page. In my case it is set to 5.8 milliseconds so I set my MIDI time adjust parameter to minus 11.6. Allow MIDI controller remapping relates to the MIDI controller mappings found in the automation menu. By default, any incoming MIDI controller messages, such as those generated by the modulation wheel on your keyboard, will be recorded in the clip along with the note data. This is perfect if you are using the mod wheel to introduce vibrato, as the controller data will move along with the notes if you move the MIDI clip. Traction also allows MIDI controllers to be mapped to VST automation parameters, however, which means your mod wheel can be used to control any of Traction's filter parameters, as can any other hardware MIDI knobs or sliders you have that send controller data. The parameters you control in this way can be on any filter, on any track, and the MIDI input in question does not even need to be enabled as a track input. Any MIDI controllers that have been mapped in this way will no longer appear at the MIDI input, and if you wish to record your parameter changes you will need to use the Automation Write button in the Transport section instead of the Normal Record option. Automation will be explained in more detail in another chapter.